Praise God. Well, welcome to the Advent season at MCCLV. Advent, remember, consists of the four Sundays before Christmas as Christian churches around the world prepare for the coming of Christ. The non-religious definition of Advent is the arrival of a notable person, event, or thing. So throughout the Advent season, Christians ready themselves for the arrival of of Christ. Christians are instructed to keep awake and keep aware of the Spirit breaking through our regular everyday routines. So Advent is a time of spiritual preparation, reflection, and celebration. And one thing we may want to consider as a lifelong spiritual preparation, reflection, and celebration is practicing something called Sabbath keeping. Today is the first part of a four-part series on keeping Sabbath. And much of this series is based on an absolutely wonderful book by the author Marva Dawn titled Keeping the Sabbath Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. And Marva Dawn, she splits her book into four parts, Ceasing, Resting, Embracing, and Feasting. So today's focus is on ceasing, but before talking more about this specific topic, just what is the Sabbath? Who instituted the Sabbath? And if it is not a law or a rule for us here today, then why bother with it? Well, first off, Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat, which means literally cease or desist. So saying Shabbat Shalom is wishing someone a peaceful Sabbath day. Sabbath is about setting apart the seventh day as holy. The Sabbath invitation is to adopt a rhythm in our lives of six days of work, one day of Sabbath, six days of work, one day of Sabbath. For observant Jews, the Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday and is completed sundown on Saturday. For Christians, the Lord's Day is Sunday, though some of us grew up with Saturday services. As we saw in our reading from Genesis, the Sabbath is from God. This is an anthropomorphic God we have in Genesis. God with human-like qualities. God has labored for six days. God has toiled and worked hard to put together creation in six days. Six days of heavy-duty industriousness. And then on the seventh day, God sits on a couch with a Budweiser and watches the Eagles game. <laughs> Wait, was that in the text from Genesis? <laughs> seriously, seriously. In Genesis we are told that God rested on the seventh day from all the work God had done. But notice that that passage is not all about God resting. What does it say? So God blessed. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from the work God had done in creation. So the seventh day is special. It is blessed. God rested and there's an invitation to God's people to be imitators of God and not just rest on the seventh day but also to set apart the day for God, to make it holy. Now then in Exodus, the community of Israel is directed by God through Moses to keep Sabbath forever. Forever. Sabbath is to be observed perpetually throughout the generations. There are harsh punishments listed for those who do not keep the Sabbath. Anything from expulsion from the community to death. By observing the Sabbath, Israel acknowledges Yahweh as their God. So in a broad sense, Keeping Sabbath for the community of Israel was a reminder of their connection with God, a forever reminder. Now these words from Exodus, these words from Genesis, they are ancient words for an ancient people. How could they possibly have anything to do with us in the 21st century? There's no law for us to keep the Sabbath. There are no penalties when we do not set apart a day for God. And indeed, that's been a relief, right? No one forces us to worship. No one forces Sabbath on us. There's no longer any sort of pressure on people to be a part of a faith community, and that is to be celebrated. Amen? You know, the combo platter of coercion and religion, that's never a pretty platter, is it? We don't want coercive religion. 
Commerce is brisk on the Lord's Day. Many stores and shops are open for business. There's little to no inconvenience for anyone. We have incredible freedom here in the United States to practice or to not practice religion. There's no state religion. There is a giant collective shrug in our country to the keeping of Sabbath. Whatever. And we have incredible freedom here in this church in regards to Sabbath. We can certainly miss worship on a Sunday, and there's no judgment. In fact, the church often makes every effort to support and encourage people, you know, we'll see you when we see you. MCCLV is a community of choice with ever open doors and a perpetual invitation to any and all. Amen? People make a choice to be a part or not be a part or be sort of a part. So, Here we go. If Sabbath is not a law for us, if God is not going to punish us for not keeping the Sabbath, if the church is not going to judge us for not setting apart Sundays as a day holy to God, then why even bother with this Sabbath thing? Well, I'd argue two points. Number one, that Sabbath keeping is an unavoidable call because God has wired us for Sabbath. And number two, if we consider ourselves to be spiritual people, Sabbath is not a bother, it is a gift. Sabbath as a a once every seven days rhythm is wired within us. We can run from it all we want, but it does not leave us. God has put within us this rhythm so that we may acknowledge God's role in our lives and God's rule over us our lives. Sabbath is a gift. It's, it's freely provided so that we may deepen our spirituality. We, we hold the gift of Sabbath lightly. We don't turn it into a chore or a bore or a set of rules or a regulation. So today's focus is on ceasing. Remember again that word Sabbath is from the Hebrew word Shabbat. It literally means to cease or desist. It's, it's command type of language. Now I remember as a child I would occasionally behave at not my best. <laughs> occasionally. Rarely. Now following the misbehavior there would be a command from a parent to cease and desist. And the tone and volume of the voice it was shared in would leave no question as to what to do in the circumstances. Cease and desist was the only option. Whatever the inappropriate behavior, it stopped immediately knowing the consequences if it did not stop. So Sabbath keeping, it's about ceasing. We stop. The Sabbath day is unlike any other day. We don't run and fuss and fit everything possible into the day. We don't work at home or places of employment. We don't work at the church. If volunteering at the church feels like work, it's probably time to uh, reevaluate our our volunteering. Instead, Sabbath is a day that we offer up to God, and in doing so, we reap great benefits. We stop. We cease and desist. We stop working, for one, Now, this does not mean that Sabbath time is spiritually superior to our work time. Instead, as Wayne Muller writes in his book titled Sabbath, we find a balance point at which having kept Sabbath, we do our work with greater ease and greater joy, and we bring healing and delight to our workplace. But we don't just stop working. We also stop all of those other things. We cease from all of that activity that defines the other six days of the week. Marva Dawn writes in her book that Sabbath keeping includes ceasing our possessiveness and our enculturation. Now possessiveness, it's not just about possessions or things, but also time and relationships and the church. Sabbath reminds us that it is all God's. Our possessions are not ours. They are God's. Our time is not ours. It is God's. Our relationships are not ours. They are God's. The church is not ours. It belongs to God. So Sabbath reminds us to treasure our possessions as gifts and to recognize that we are stewards while God is is the owner of it all. And our stewardship 
of our possessions, our time, our relationships, and the church, it matters dearly to future generations. Now, if we want to possess things and people and communities, what we do is we partake in idolatry. But when we truly care for things, when we truly care for time and relationships and the church, we invest in them and we make sure that they are passed on to future generations. So being a faithful steward is thinking about how our actions and our investments impact future generations. There's a movie, it's titled Grand Torino, and it featured uh, Clint Eastwood in the lead role. And it's a movie, it's about this retired auto worker. His name is Walt Kowalski, and he's a Catholic He lives in this changing neighborhood in Detroit. And Walt, he owns this Gran Torino car, and it's in impeccable condition. And because of his care for the car, he is able to make sure it is of use to a future generation. So this Gran Torino, it's not just a possession, it's a symbol of the seriousness of Walt's investments in life. So taking the Sabbath seriously is an investment of time and reflective thought that helps us to discover the meaning of all our other investments. So keeping Sabbath helps us determine where to pull back in our lives and where to invest, where to pull back our energy, where to invest our energy. That once every seven days of ceasing and desisting gives us a different perspective. When we slow down, when we stop and take a breath, when we give things thought, we we grow in God. And in this spiritual growth, it's where we where we are to invest becomes a lot clearer. So Sabbath keeping it's about stopping our pursuit of possessiveness. It's also about stopping our enculturation. And everyone say, ooh, ooh. What is enculturation? Enculturation is when we are more defined by the culture around us than we are by God. Enculturation is a contentment with the trendy and what's popular and what everyone's talking about. It's knowing the ways of the world more than we know the ways of God. And most of us, we're in the world in some way. We may not be of the world, but we're in the world in our workplaces or with family or friends. We know the language of the world. We know how to get along in the world. And it's hard sometimes, isn't it, to not give in to the ways of the world. It's difficult sometimes to maintain a steadfast faithfulness in the midst of the attractiveness of status or position or recognition. It's certainly a struggle sometimes to set apart time for God in the midst of so many things competing for our attention. Now the great thing about Sabbath keeping is that it pulls us away from the culture and it puts us in deeper contact with the divine. Now the questions we ask when we are enculturated, are questions like this. Am I a success? Are my relationships rewarding to me? How may I get recognized for my accomplishments? What can I do to get more people to pay attention to my work? How can I better use my time to get ahead? Those are the questions we ask when we're enculturated. But when we start keeping Sabbath and setting aside a day just for God, the questions start to change. We start asking questions like these. Am I God's? Do I belong to God? Am I living sacrificially Am I giving sacrificially in my relationships or am I just trying to get something? How may I encourage other people in their spiritual journey? What can I do to support others? How can I use my time left on earth for God? Now, most of all, what Sabbath keeping does for us is we start freeing ourselves from the need to be God. Oh, no one else finds that slightly awkward and uncomfortable and kind of funny? I'll I'll say it again. Most of all, what Sabbath keeping does is it starts freeing us from the need to be God. We cannot be all things to all people all of the time. UCC pastor and author Martin Copenhaver, he writes about a woman who is in a job where she felt like she needed to make herself available at any hour every day of the year. 
She eventually left that job and was able to laugh at herself saying, there used to be a time when only God was that important. <laughs> now it's precisely that phrase, only God is that important, that draws us into Sabbath keeping. When we stop working for a day, we start to see that the world seems to do all right without us. So we stop. We slow down and we shut down. Every other day it's a green light, right? It's go, go, go. It's productivity. It's getting things done. What Sabbath reminds us of is that we all need to stop from time to time. We need time in our lives that's not planned or programmed and instead radically open to the movement of the Holy Spirit. If we're always going and doing and checking what is the latest and greatest, we may miss out on the bigger picture of God's creative force at work in our lives and around the world. So we stop, right? Talk to the hand. <laughs> and in stopping, we listen more for God. We stop running. Do our so-called days off often feel more like a race? We race from here to there, but Sabbath is not a race. It's not a competition or a contest. It is a ceasing from all of that. And for those of us who want a little more social justice or politics in their Sabbath, it's definitely there. The great biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann, he points that out that in the context of Exodus and the community of Israel's liberation from Egypt, Sabbath is about a work stoppage. It's about withdrawal from the anxiety system of Pharaoh, the refusal to let one's life be defined by production and consumption and the endless pursuit of private well-being. We cease and desist from participation in the dominant culture of the day. Now there is a whole list of things we could do on the Sabbath. Right? We could work. After all, many of us have smartphones and computers. We are available to work seven days a week. And there are people here in the retail field or the health field or have church employment. And if we are in any of those fields, we indeed need to schedule, uh, uh, we need to schedule another day during the week to observe Sabbath. Accumulation. Well, we could spend the Sabbath accumulating more and more things. We could fill our Sabbath with errands, the things we don't take time for for the other six days of the week. We could spend our Sabbath consuming and, and shopping, doing chores, striving, right? We could spend the Sabbath day striving and stretching to be something that we're not called to be. Aimless tech, one of my favorites, right? We could fill our Sabbath with all things tech, letting the Internet guide our day. The greatest seduction of technology is that it lets us think that we are somehow in charge of it. May we never forget that it is in charge of us. <laughs> Every time we click anywhere online, someone knows it and records it. Or we could spend our Sabbath running. But what if Sabbath was none of those things? What if we made Sabbath about God and God's people? Now, we may think of ceasing as a, a negative thing, so it's important here this morning that uh, we end with the positive. For some of us, we, we come from families where it was shameful to stop activity, right? We had to keep going, we had to be always available, or somehow the family system would crash. Sabbath reminds us, that we can rely on God and things will turn out all right. A beautiful thing about Sabbath keeping is that it gives us a, a proper sense of who we are in relation to God. We are not God. And we need not try to be God in our workplaces or homes or churches or wherever. God values us just as we are and there is nothing we must produce in order to be considered worthy and valuable to God. We were worthy and valuable the moment God created us. And theologian Philip Carey, he puts it this way, every time we turn to Christ in faith, it is like a moment of Sabbath, a little foretaste of eternal rest and glory. The gift of that moment lies not in what we do, but in what we receive. 
It is a holy time set aside to receive the greatest gift God ever has to give, which is God's own self and God's own beloved Son. So Sabbath keeping involves ceasing, stopping, desisting from what we do the other six days of the week. We stop, we reflect, we let ourselves receive the unearned goodness of God and let the people say, Ah, let us pray. All praises to you, O God, for the gift of the Sabbath. One day, every seven days, set apart just for you. We ask that you assist us in our Sabbath keeping. Grow us ever more to be aware of your divine rhythms in our lives. We have stopped here for you this day. We have ceased and we have loved it. We cannot wait for the next Sabbath day. Amen.